Hey everyone, Hammy here and welcome to a new series. Hopefully we'll be discovering more in this series about the people behind the characters of Overwatch. To kick things off, someone who you've most wanted to hear from. I had the privilege of having a chat with Carolina Ravasa, the voice actor behind Sombra. We had a great chat about her career, how she got into acting, the world of Sombra and being a Blizzard voice actor, her web series, videos with Symmetra, and the trials and tribulations of being Hispanglo-Saxon in New York. As Carolina was taking some time out of her busy schedule, the call was recorded on Skype, so there's the odd volume drop and a little distortion here and there, entirely my fault, but do stick with it. If it turns up, it very soon passes. There are time codes in the description below if you want to skip to a particular question or topic. Please do go check out Carolina's YouTube channel, Twitter and more. Links are all in the description and the pinned comment below after you've watched this. And do say hi from me. The links will be at the end of the video too. Okay, let's get stuck in. I'm here with uh, Carolina Ravassa. Got to make sure I pronounce it correctly. To you, probably known as the voice of Sombra. How's it going? That was perfect pronunciation, Hammy. Thank you so much. <laughs> really? <laughs> are you being a little bit kind? I'm, I'm slightly known on YouTube for, for butchering no, accents. No, no. <laughs> I'm serious. You actually said that perfectly. Usually people say Carolina, so you're good. You're good. I did watch your uh, web series, Hispanglo Saxon, and I heard you pronounce it. I have to confess, I was cheating a little bit there. I did do a little bit of research, but we should absolutely nice. talk about that later. <laughs> for so, sure. How's things at the moment? Is it busy times for you? A lot of work on at the moment? Um, you know, there's a lot of conventions coming up for, uh, you know, where somebody's going to go sign autographs and talk on panels and stuff. So that's exciting because I feel like I got at least a convention a month happening. So, uh, yeah, I feel like that's, that's keeping me busy. But also, you know, just good old auditions for film and TV in, in New York City. So, yeah. What conventions are you going to be coming up to? Anything that American folks would like to come and have a look at? For sure. Um, I am going the next one. Actually, the next one's in Canada, in Calgary. Um, that's at the end of June. I am hitting Honolulu at the end of July. Um, I might possibly go to Kuwait. That's not in the U.S., obviously. No, uh, uh, yeah, uh, maybe San Antonio. We're considering that end of May. So some things are up in the air. So, you know, they're not confirmed yet. But, um, yeah, that's a lot of stuff going on. Oh, brilliant. And then maybe BlizzCon in November as well. And then before you know it, it's going to be 2018. Oh, my God, don't say that. It's too fast. You said you had some auditions and things going on today. How do you manage to sort of juggle all of the conventions with shooting your web series and then uh, doing all of these gigs as well? Yeah, well, I think for conventions, luckily, they're always over the weekend. So it just means I take off a Friday or a Thursday and go till Sunday. So it's not like it takes out, you know, uh, weekdays away from me for auditions and stuff. And, and I just started the conventions really recently. So it's not like I can tell you how I juggle them. It's just I've been to a couple and so far so good, you know, the timing's worked out. But I think it's just a, it's a matter of finding balance, you know. Um, I audition for stuff and if it's a busy week doing, uh, you know, important tea auditions, then I don't do as many videos for my, my YouTube channel. I kind of try and find time for the YouTube channel when other stuff isn't happening that obviously pays. So it's just like it's managing my time and I think I've been pretty good at that since I was a kid. So I'm pretty nerdy at time management, you know. I think I do that well. <laughs> um, you mentioned sort of being nerdy since you were a kid. Um, did you always sort of want <laughs> to be an actor? Is it one of those things that you sort of had since you were very, very young? Yeah, you know, it's funny how in high school or middle school or elementary school, you know, acting is considered the nerdy thing that, you know, nerd, nerd kids do. Um, yes, I always loved acting since I was probably five. I did a, a musical at school, it was The Sound of Music, and I just absolutely loved it. And maybe it was being on stage, it was uh, playing another character, but it was also interacting with the older kids at my school. And so, I don't know, I just felt like I fell into it, um, probably because I was a hyperactive child, I always say that. And, and I loved it. So, uh, I, I don't know if it's the nerd in me that liked acting, but for sure, uh, just the art artistic person in me loved acting and that's I just continued that since I was five. Uh, what role did you have in The Sound of Music if it's not a rude question? Oh I played Gretel the youngest daughter the tiny tiny one um, and I just loved her it was really fun to play. Did you have fun with all of the songs in it? <laughs> oh my god for sure I just remember that when I they were, were auditioning some of the kids in my first grade class um, you know when the when the director said okay does anybody want to sing this song I, I raised my hand immediately and he's like, oh, okay, great. And I, when I started singing the song, I realized I hadn't even listened to the lyrics properly, so I totally screwed it up. But I didn't care. I was like, oh, wait, how does it go again? And then he just corrected me, and then I did it. And so I think I just loved this performance aspect as a child without really understanding what it was. So, um, you know, and then I loved, and that was the, that's the song that she, her solo. So that, that's what I auditioned with, and then I, I ended up loving all of it, you know, the choreography and 
relating to other kids and, and working with the director, I think it was just all a really good experience for me. I'm trying to remember if Gretel has the, the high note in So Long Farewell, Auf Wiedersehen, Goodbye or not. <laughs> she does the last one. The sun has gone to oh, heaven, yeah. so must I. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was my child voice doing Gretel. <laughs> you studied in Boston College. How, how was that for you? Because you're obviously born and from Columbia. So how was the sort of the move to the U.S.? Obviously, you traveled around quite a bit beforehand, though, right? I did. Well, as a child, I used to go up to the U.S. a lot in the summers because my um, my grandma's American. And so some of my aunts still live in America. Even uh, though my mom, um, is it Wisconsin? Is my memory right there? Oh, my God. Look at you. You've done your research. Uh, yes. My grandma was from Wisconsin. Uh, good old, you know, German, blue-eyed, blonde American girl, and um, but she married my grandfather, and that's how you know we ended up kind of being raised in Colombia, if you will. And um, both the parents are Colombian, but we had a very American side to us. And then on my dad's side, there's a, a little bit of Spain. My grandfather was from there, so I feel like I, I've always loved, and we, my family's always loved traveling and stuff. So as a kid, you know, we went to the U.S. a lot to visit family, and um, so I didn't feel completely foreign to the U.S. But I will say, when I hit college, um, the first year was very hard. It was a lot of work. Um, I'd never been so challenged. Even though my school was very good, I, I'd never been so challenged, um, you know, academically. And, and trying to juggle the theater world and academics was really hard for me the first year. So, sure. you know, I think that's where time management came into play for real. It was, it was quite a mixed program, After wasn't the it? Period, it was. It was. It was like, um, it was a liberal arts program. So I knew I was studying theater, but I was doing all sorts of classes from, you know, history to mathematics to science, which I think in the end was good, although I hated it at the time course um but i think that once i found the people that i loved and, and started working more closely with the theater people and and i was just doing things i loved i think that you know i grew into boston and the, the weather and all that crazy stuff and i ended up actually loving boston college and and all my theater professors and and the students that i, I studied with they're just they're still good friends you know, you know so it was a very good experience for me there seem to be a whole ton of languages that you speak, but in one of your sort of web series, I saw that you learned Portuguese doing theatre in prisons. What's the story behind that? Oh my God, you have done your research, and I mean, it's really good. Um, I'm sorry. No, I'm really <laughs> glad you're watching my web series. That you know, that's that's good. Um, so I always loved. Brazil for some reason. As a kid, I wanted to visit Iguazu Falls, which is like their most beautiful waterfall oh, in, sure. in Brazil. And so I just had this dream of going there. And then when I was in college, I started learning about Theater of the Oppressed, which is a sociopolitical street theater um, created by a, a Brazilian guy in Rio de Janeiro. And so I, I started looking into going abroad and Brazil was just something that always stood out to me. And it worked out that they were also receiving interns at this you know, Theater of the Oppressed program. So I ended up going because of my love for Portuguese and Samba and, you know, all these crazy cultural things they have. But also it just worked out with this with this really um, deep sense of, of social theater that I felt at the time. So um, that's where I mean, I had been studying Portuguese and then obviously living there. I just perfected it because if you're a Spanish speaker, it helps. It's pretty easy. Not easy. It's easier to learn Portuguese. So I just felt like I, you know, I fell into the culture because I, I felt so connected to them and. Uh, and my experience was not just theater in prisons, but it was with housemaids and um, mentally ill patients in hospitals and also um, uh, teachers in, um, in public school programs. So it was a very diverse kind of theater program thing. Amazing. It was one of the most special experiences that I've had. I can imagine, yeah. And it's, it sounds as though that, you know, you've been in a lot of different places and managed to travel a lot of different places with your career and work and, and shoot a lot of different stuff. Um, you mentioned Brazil. Um, I, was, I was having a look through um, your IMDb and I saw Brasilia, City of the Future, with, uh, with Reggie Watts. <laughs> yes, yep. Have, have you seen Terry Gilliam's Brazil? No, it's, it's insane. Yeah, don't, I don't know what else to respond to that. It's just an insane film. Yeah, my wife half introduced me to it. And as soon as I saw your, a bit of your Brasilia City of the Future, I was like, yeah, this is sort of the dystopian slightly. I was just wondering if that was a bit of an inspiration. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what inspires Reggie because he's a crazy human being. But um, I will say he's brilliant and he's a genius. And I was lucky enough to be invited to be in this film with him. He knew I spoke Portuguese and that I'd lived in Brazil. And so I happened to choose to shoot a short film in Brasilia because the architecture is just so bizarre and wonderful. Um, you know, he called me to do it and I, I, of course, I jumped right on. So that was another amazing Brazil experience. And I had, I had lived there eight years before. So I went back. It was just, it was a mix of nostalgia and like new stuff because I'd never actually been to Brasilia. I'd been to Rio and, and, 
and Sao Paulo and, you know, different places. So for me, it was the first time there. And, oh, it was just, it was wonderful. And it, it, I just, it's full improvised and he did, he did most of it, you know, I just played along with him. So honestly, I don't know what the hell inspires Reggie, but he just goes with his like twisted brain and, and it works, you know, <laughs> it's also, you know, one of proper comedian beatboxer he just does a bunch of things so that's what i love about him he's, he's got so many different facets to him. Yeah, but go uh, ahead darling uh, and sp speaking of different facets darling um sort of having a look at what you've been up to you've done such a like a <laughs> wide variety of of roles and styles and work i mean i think you've done a horror film in terms of havana darkness and then um your web series yep. and then obviously your voice work is that it's a really weird question but is there anything that you prefer doing any sort of particular you style know, had of, you asked uh, me had, yeah had you asked me three years ago, I would have told you drama. Drama was my thing. I love, you know, I, I want to play a cop on, you know, on TV shows in, in the States. I want to, I want to, I, I, I just always felt connected to dark stuff. But then when I started doing my web series, I never thought of it as sketch comedy. I just thought, oh, I'm going to play the characters and see what happens. Um, and then it ended up slightly funny and awkward. So it's like, oh my God, like that was what made me discover that I love comedy. And all of a sudden, I feel like I love being characters. So if you ask me right now, I think I like both equally because I, I really connect to deep, deep, dark stuff that maybe um, educates people on a certain subject matter. Um, I feel connected to, to sad stories. Not, not that I'm a sad human being, but... Um, and then the comedy stuff is just so light and wonderful. Uh, we'll see, I don't know. I'm doing for all sorts of things right now. Um, you mentioned sort of fancying a cop role. Are there any sort of cop roles in sort of dramas or films or things you've, you've seen, whether it's like way in the past or recently, and thought, you know, I'd really love to give that a go? Um, you know, I, I think that, let me think, let me think. Uh, for example, right now, uh, Jennifer is producing a TV show called Chase Blue. And, you know, I wouldn't mind being a DEA agent on that show and kind of uh, dealing with crime in the city. Um, or, you know, any, any show in the, in the U.S. that has, like any procedural, you know, Chicago PD or... Even Law and Order, um, all those they have, they usually have some sort of investigation going on. So I'd love to do that. But then again, I'd also love to play a prisoner on Orange Is the New Black. You know, so I think I can play both sides of the law, if you will. Working opposite a very sort of famous cop for me, at least, because you mentioned drama and you did The Affair on Showtime in 2014. So how is it uh, working McNulty. with Dominic West? Yeah, McNulty from The yeah. Wire. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, oh, he's a dream come true. He was. Uh, He's just absolutely professional and so generous in his acting. And um, and not only is he a good actor, he just cares about uh, the crew around him and who he's working with. And, you know, I, uh, seldomly have I seen the stars of shows talk to extras. And he was just so lovely talking to the, the people in the pool around us. And, you know, him and I chatted up quite a bit when we weren't acting. And he's just a fascinating person. And, and I loved it. Uh, you know, he had my back. If He was like, you know, if you don't feel comfortable... Um, doing something let me know because you know we at some point we had a kind of a steamy scene to do so i love that he he just felt very connected to me but also just wanted to make me feel comfortable and if, I, if there was something that i didn't want to do then you know he, he had my back as a, as a performer and so i really appreciated that um him as a veteran and me as kind of a newcomer to, to this film to this project to this tv show you've yeah. obviously traveled to cuba for um havana darkness i think it is is there any sort of other places that you've traveled in terms of shooting the independent films that you've done and things that you've really really enjoyed outside of brazil um well cuba cuba uh, brazil is one of my favorite countries in the world and cuba became also up there because uh i just connected to people i love i love that i speak spanish so i can connect to you know anybody who lives there so for me it was a really magical experience to, to talk to them and see how music just infuses their life uh, so that was very special i, I went to mexico shooting a piece called dopamine and the people in acapulco were also so sweet mexicans you know the impeccable service just lovely lovely people as well um i have gotten to travel a bit for work and i, I have a film project uh, coming up in italy in this in the fall and i've never worked in italy but i i spent uh, summer there so I'm excited for that, too, because I feel like all, all these indie projects take me to, to different countries that I love. And so I'm just grateful for that, you know, getting to experience different cultures. It gives you a different perspective on the country and the city you're in. It's really cool. On the, the flip side of everything to do with sort of the film and TV industry, there is, of course, video games. Um, you've uh, done a bit of video games work before. Uh, you came to Overwatch. Um, how was it sort of uh, working with Rockstar on Max Payne and, and GTA? Uh, that was fun. It was my first time was Max Payne, and um, 
I had never done motion capture, so for me it was cool to just kind of try something totally different, put on the whole mocap suit and stuff. It's always been fun. Then then GTA Five was me voicing Taliana, so I did I did mocap for them, and I also did the voice. And I think that was kind of the bigger role I had done, and so I felt really proud of you know playing this like badass rapper chick. Um, so that she's, was fun. She's a really good driver, actually. She's right. she's re she's really awesome in several of the missions and heists. So yeah, it's definitely definitely a very uh, handy character to have around. Yeah, totally, totally. I dug dug doing that. I felt kind of proud of playing this badass thing, and then Soma came along, and I feel like just, Soma's been the biggest, of course, compared to the other two projects, and just because I can really get behind the whole premise of Overwatch, and the inclusivity, and the diversity, and so I just feel really proud to be playing the first Latino on there, and uh, I know that Blizzard is such a great company to work for, and, and that they just care so much about their characters, and and the kind of what they're putting out into the world in terms of, like I said, diversity. How did um, Sombra come about? Was it just a straight audition? I mean, did you get much of a, a brief when you were going in, or is it just sort of a quite quite a secretive, as you've said before? Well, you know, they actually for the breakdowns they did say it was a Blizzard project, and it, it was uh, I think her name was Noche, which means night. I just remember thinking, oh, okay, another video game. But because I didn't, for, when, every time I worked for Rockstar, they never really tell you the name of anything that you're doing. So I didn't even care to look this up because I thought, well, I'm not going to find anything. Um, so I didn't think much about it, and. <laughs> It took a couple months before I started recording, so I, I had forgotten about the audition completely. Um, and I, I went through my agents, Abrams artists. They sent me out a lot for stuff that uh, includes the Spanish accent, some of the speak Spanish. So I knew I was right for her because I felt very connected to her tone and the quality of, of what I felt was so good up. But, you know, like I said, I didn't book her until later, so she came around again. So it was, it was, and even when I was recording, I didn't know how big uh, Overwatch was. So. It was all just a really great surprise for me. One thing, I have to admit my ignorance here, is that obviously I know sort of, you know, different English dialects within the UK, and obviously I know there are differences between like, you know, Mexican speaking of Spanish and maybe European speaking of Spanish. One thing I wasn't really so familiar with, Mexican Spanish sort of, sort of local idioms, phrases and things like that. From, yeah. your, from your Spanish speaking experience, when Blizzard came to you with some of the Mexican lines, were they things that you recognized? One that I'm going to butcher horribly was Me hace lo que el viento a Juarez. Was, was that familiar to you yep. in terms of... Um, oh, so, God, so. no. I had no idea what that was. Um, there's a, yeah, there's a lot of terms, you know, just like you say birds and blokes or whatever. Um, yeah, sure. It was kind of like, <laughs> what? Um, a lot of them... Well, actually, a lot of them are also kind of old school Mexican slang, so they're a little bit 90s or, or more dated, you know, so, and I think they the, they did that on purpose, but, so yeah, I did not recognize a lot of them just because they're so different, and I have a lot of Mexican friends, and I know some basics just because in New York we hang out with a lot of Mexicans, but um, a lot of those I hadn't heard, and then I realized it's because they're a little bit old school, but, um, so yeah, I guess I just, in context, I understood what they meant, but I wasn't sure where they came from. And since then, I've been looking up all the, you know, all the, the real meanings or the origins of these things, which is kind of fun. I found it really fascinating because I sort of take the voice lines of, of characters in a video series I do and sort of um, try and explain them in context for people. And then you had uh, people sort of, you know, different Spanish speakers from different parts of the world saying, oh, I didn't really understand this. And then other people saying, people from Mexico saying, oh, Blizzard have got this spot on. So it was really fascinating just to see, you know, how one language can have so many different facets in different places. Oh, totally. Because there's so many South American and Central American countries and Spain, of course. It's, I don't know, there's like 27 of us. So it's like almost when you tr when you talk about slang and idioms, it's like 27 different languages, you know? And and within those countries, also every city has their own thing. So, you know, it's just, it's very, it's very complex. How was the whole Blizzard experience in terms of coming into Voice Sombra and things and working with Andrea Toyer and Michael Chi? Oh, they're so wonderful. I just love them. Um, everything about, about working with Blizzard has been great. Um, the recording sessions are so much fun. They're always very kind of uh, high energy and enthusiastic, even if I'm not getting a voice line because I'm not, you know, my, maybe getting the tone or understanding the context. We just do it over and over again until we get it right. And they're always, you know, super encouraging, which is fun. Uh, and Andrea's the main one who talks to us via headset because I'm, I'm in New York always. And she's just great. And then, you know, Michael Chu will dip in here and there explaining a little bit further what everything means. Um, and I got to get to know Michael a little bit more when we went to South by Southwest and I'm just in awe of, you know, what an intelligent, creative, wonderful human being he is. So I feel like the Blizzard family is just really 
really wonderful. How's the, how's the whole community experience? I mean, you mentioned that uh, you weren't quite sort of aware in a way of how big, sombre and things were. Was there a particular moment you can remember where it really struck you and you thought, oh, holy crap, this is absolutely massive or this is bigger than I thought? Well, um, I think that I was, at, I was at BlizzCon when they unveiled Sombra at oh, the wow. ceremony. <laughs> yeah. That'll do it. <laughs> I was sitting in the audience with my buddy and uh, as soon as the screen started going, glitchy like I had been told that somebody would hack the screen so I said to my buddy oh dude that's me um and he's like oh my god and then when everybody just started screaming and whistling and going crazy <laughs> I was like oh my god that's me you know like I didn't understand I didn't understand uh what it was gonna be until like I just I I, I didn't know people were um expecting her or waiting for her because of all the a a ARG stuff yeah, yeah. I didn't know that existed so for me, I just thought they were going to unveil my character and that was, you know, it was going to be a total surprise, but I didn't realize they'd done so much hype up around her before the thing. So I guess I was just surprised at, at that. And then once I started getting people writing to me via Twitter, like, hey, you know, what's up? Can, you, can I get a boop? All of a sudden it, <laughs> it, it, it dawned on me that, that, you know, now people were searching to see who the heck Sombra was and they were finding me. So I think that it took a few days for it to really settle in because my brain was totally scrambled at BlizzCon. Um, I can imagine, yeah. <laughs> oh, I was exhausted. I was socially exhausted. Um, but it was great. It was so special. Yeah. How was it? Because um, you did a really fun panel as well with all of the other voice actors and um, uh, sort of the acting talent. Was it cool to sort of, um, and we must chat a, a bit more about that in a sec, but was it cool to meet all those guys? How was that for you? That was awesome. The thing is, they had also, they knew what Overwatch was eight months before or even more since the game came out. And so I was like, I was literally, I felt like I was just born at that moment because I, th I got thrown into this world and I didn't know what it was. And then they're all like, oh, hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. And then, you know, a lot of people kept saying, welcome to the Blizzard family. You're going to realize that this is just the, the most wonderful family to be a part of. And I was like, okay, weirdos. And then I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, they're right, you know. Um, I, I loved meeting all the other actors at that panel and then at the rap party because I, I just realized the diverse the, the diversity that there was and people from all over the world and, and everyone was just full of love and appreciation and oh god it was it was a really special weekend for me for sure. You seem to have a really good uh, um, time with Anjali, who voices Symmetra. I mean, uh, when did you guys meet first? Was it the rap party? Or? <laughs> we met at the rap party, and um, she was like, oh, I've, I've lived in New York. Where do you live? And I'm like, oh, Brooklyn. And she, she lived in New York for quite a few years, so I, felt, I think she felt automatically connected to me because she kind of misses New York a little bit. So then she was like, hey, I'm going to go in like a few weeks. You want to hang? You want to get coffee? And I was like, sure. Um, so, and I remember, you know, I exchanged numbers with Kara and Charlotte and they were, they were just felt so sweet. And Charlotte's giving me great tips on, on conventions. And, um, well, I, I, I spoke to, so Kristen Freeman was great, great giving me kind of the rundown of what a convention is. Cause I'm like, oh, what am I supposed to do? And then, you know, the more I talk to all the different actors, um, you know, I'm learning little by little how it all works. And so everyone's just been very generous with their time and, and their advice and, and then Anjali, she came to New York, and then I ended up going to L.A. So we've just ended up in a lot of places at the same time. And so, so it's you know, we've gotten to know each other, and she's just so lovely, you know? So Sombra and Symmetra are hanging out a lot. You guys seem to be having a lot of fun on YouTube. Is, uh, is it a matter of time before this, <laughs> the Simbra miniseries makes its way over? You should ask Michael uh, Chu about that one, see if you can get a, a little bit of animating help or something. I know, <laughs> I know. I know, right? Uh, we're waiting for a YouTube fan to do some animation. Um... I don't know. We'll see where it develops. You know, I think that at the beginning she had a YouTube channel. So did I. So we we're like, okay, let's do little videos and post them, you know, for the fans. And then they've kind of morphed into this fun, like fooling around in the city and, and, and being weird. And, and I really enjoy being a little zany and kind of out there. So I don't know. We'll see. I'm doing, I'm doing some other videos that involve his Spangle Saxon and Sombra. So we'll see. Uh, they might uh, go on the air tomorrow. We'll see. Oh, ah, very exciting. And, because I think it's been really fun to, to get such good reception. And, you know, most people are enjoying them, so I think it's all been, it's all been positive. Hey, very awesome. And it's, um, it's really cool from sort of a fan of the game and, and you and everyone's work's perspective to see those. So uh, please don't stop. <laughs> it's really appreciated. Oh, good, good. Okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, Every now and then people are like, this is stupid. But most of them are pretty positive, so... Yeah, um, I don't know how familiar you are with Reddit, but um, on the Overwatch subreddit, they, they sort of always hit the front page. So yeah, very, very popular with the community, I think. 
<laughs> oh, that's so funny. I never go on Reddit, but um, I'm grateful for it. <laughs> um, you mentioned your web yeah. series, Hispanglo-Saxon, which I've sort of binged a little bit. It's it's really, really funny. And a lot of it translates, even though I, I'm not sort of familiar with that world too much. And it's, it's your experience right. as... I think you described it as too white to play Latina, too ethnic to play white in terms of your, your acting sort of auditioning and things in New York. Yep. You know, that just was born out of reality. A um, little bit cathartic. Here. God, yeah. This Anglo-Saxon came at a time where I was just tired of auditioning for um, for roles where I was, you know, I, I couldn't play. So it, it came at a time when I was, uh, I just needed to express everything that was going on, and I, I wanted to, people to know the experiences I was living uh, as an actor was ethnically ambiguous, so, and I, I was also just desperate to um, to act and to perform, so that's why that's why it came together. I needed to tell that story, so that's that's how it came around. Yeah, and I mean, I, there was one particular thing that I saw where you were talking about waiting tables um, and people speaking, people, was it Portuguese or Spanish, and then you could understand them even though that they didn't realize that you spoke the language? <laughs> Yeah, that's ha- that happens to me a lot in the city because people just assume I'm, you know, I don't speak French, but I understand. So a lot of languages that uh, I have uh, dabbled with, I, I can understand some things. And so uh, a lot of times you think that I just don't understand. And I waited tables a while in the city so I could understand the Spanish, Portuguese, and Italian that was being spoken about me, you know. Um, so yeah, it's all based on true stories, legitimately, you know, verbatim, everything that has happened to me. Yeah, I, I really felt that waiting tables one. I used to manage bars for a while, and although I'm, a, I'm definitely no expert at French or German, I could very much understand occasionally the, uh, the, yeah. the, the, the old swear word and a little bit of a complaint at the delay for food or things like that that would occasionally come from a table. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Yep. Or, um, or worse is when it, there's cat calls in Spanish and they assume you don't understand and then I turn around and let them know, you know, that exactly I got everything what you think they of said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it still happens all the time. Well, at least you can call people out on it. A lot of uh, a lot of red faces, know, right? I'm sure. <laughs> um, oh, you, sure. You, you play something like 16 plus characters in that show. I mean, how, how do you sort of produce it? Because you edit it, you um, you, you direct it and things as well. How, how long does one of those episodes take to put together? Um, in terms of writing and like making things, I can't tell you because I just kind of take my time. Um, I let things sit for a while and then go back to them. Um, I think that once I've decided I'm going to do an episode... Um, I'll, I'll find a location, usually like a friend's house, or I used to wait tables at a restaurant and they let me use their back garden. And so I, I kind of find the location and then um, usually I take about three hours to shoot it. So, you know, between setup and stuff, the character takes, usually the Carolina character is quicker because it's just me, but then I have to put on the wig and the makeup for the second one. And that takes a little bit longer. But then editing, I honestly have no idea how long it takes because I'll do a first run through and edit stuff and then uh, I'll let it sit for a bit so that I can kind of think about it and, and then look at it with fresh eyes. So, um, and usually, you know, I, I, I've always been pretty artsy and creative. So a lot of the makeup for all the characters, I just started doing you know, on where um, I kind of experimented at my house to see if it worked. And then after one little test, if I realized it worked, then I'd be like, okay, I'm ready to shoot this, you know. And um, the accents usually have just, there's stuff, there are accents that live inside of me. So... <laughs> You know, I kind of just pull them out when the time's right. And um, I saw on your website you a particular accent that was English, British. I'd love to know what your, your thoughts about British accents are. Oh, my God. Okay, I think they're really posh, usually. <laughs> Unless it's not cockney, you're not, you're not, not this, you know. Not, it, not, it just gets like, a little bit, like, I don't know. I like to F around with them, but I really have fun um, with accents. Anyway, I love the British accent. But I definitely experiment putting on a wig and seeing, you know, is this wig Russian? Is is she British? Is she Indian? You know, so I feel like it's just a matter of finding the character that fits with the wig. And then, you know, I dig through my closet or I borrow stuff from friends. I try and keep it very non-budget, if you will, because I shoot with my iPhone and I edit it on my computer. So Hey, it looks, it looks really good. I mean, I was having a look at some of your lighting in it and thinking, hey, I really need to sort out if, if that's what you can do with natural lighting, then I'm just doing this a little bit wrong with my, my little web cameras and things like that. So I'll, uh, I'll have, to, have to take a few tips from you, I think. You, all, you always have to face the windows. That's, that's like plain light on your whole face and that's where you're not going to get any awkward shadows or anything that's the good thing about comedy you know it gets away with like very kind of flat lighting which is good so there's one episode in there where and i know it's something you've mentioned in interviews before sort of um a little bit to do with like stereotypes of latinas um do you think that there's a, a bit of a media stereotype of latinas and then are you sort of how do you find sombra in comparison to that as a character I think there's a media start to stereotype in everything. Uh, you know, my my poor Arab friends only play terrorists in Homeland and Law and Order. So I think that yes, there there are stereotypes that are being perpetuated still, and and of course it's true there are Arab terrorists, but there are also Latino and British terrorists. Just there, like, there are non-evil you know, British people as well. 
<laughs> exactly. Jafar and Scar, all of them are Brits in, in Disney. But um, um, I think that Sombra is, well, like I've said before, tons of Latinos have accents when they move to the States because they're bilingual or tri- trilingual. So I don't mind that she has an accent. I think that's really cool. Um, I think that it's it's cool that she's not hypersexualized and she's not wearing heels and like she, her boobs aren't popping out of her little shirt. So I think that she's a, a cool balance between you know, badass and strong and smart and not just ditzy and sexy. So I, I really think that she goes against that, which is great. Are there any little bits of, I mean, you mentioned sort of enjoying the sort of the, the, the cop thing or, you know, potentially sort of like little dark elements of characters. Are there any sort of bits of yourself that you think you really bring to Sombra or sort of bits of Sombra that you sort of see in yourself a little bit? For sure. Um, I, I have a dark sense of humor. So I like when she when she's like, oh, pobrecito. She's like, yeah, F you. You know, she's not really saying her <laughs> thing. Um <laughs> I just, I like that she, she knows she's really good at what she's doing. Um, not that I know that I'm good at what I'm doing, but I, I like her confidence. And I feel like I have that. And um, I don't, like, I know that she thinks she's the best at hacking and all that. So it's not something that I feel in my real life, but I but I can I can click into that as a character. And I think that I like that, I like that she has a low voice, you know. She's not like uh, a lot of stereotypical Latinas that have a high-pitched or nasally voice and kind of loud and annoying. I think that she's very kind of subdued and, and cool and... Um, you know, she she's a little jaded, which is okay, and so I, I like that. You know. Yeah, in terms of the the voice thing and the accent you mentioned, it's really interesting. And in, in one of your little web series, I sort of saw. Did, have people really asked you to try and do voices like other celebrities in, in interviews? Oh yeah, that you've yeah, done? for sure. <laughs> Not in interviews, but uh, I've done auditions where I have to imitate J Lo, Sofia Vergara, Shakira, uh, Penelope Cruz. So you know, that's just part of um, Hollywood now. I guess they they want you to sound like them for certain either to sell certain products or to do demos for their, their future commercials. So, yeah, it's something that we do all the time. And if they're, they're looking to cast a sitcom and they want the funny Latina, then they'll definitely ask you to play Sophia Vergara just because they realize that that already works. Um, so, yeah, we're kind of used to that, um, being asked to do that stuff. Blizzard sort of make games and it sort of lasts for a very long time. Has it ever sort of occurred to you that you might still hopefully be playing somewhere in like 10 years' time? I mean, how Dude, does sort of... Yeah, it hit me when I was at BlizzCon and I saw, I think there was a panel for World of Warcraft and the actors that have been doing their voices for years were sitting there on the panel and I was like, oh my God, that could be me in 10 years talking about Sombra. So I think that's the moment it hit me only because I saw them. It makes me really happy. And just sort of as a final uh, sign off, is there anything you'd like to say to the Overwatch community or anything like that? I would like to say, apagando las luces. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh no wait Hammy remember everything can be hacked and everyone <laughs> I love it there you go that's thank it. you for that. that's, that's a really thank cool sign thank you so much darling thanks very much for tuning in I hope you enjoyed hearing from Carolina as much as I did having a chat with her if you like this video do throw a like subscribe and comment below with any thoughts on how I can improve this any questions you might have for Overwatch's voice actors in the future as well as who you'd like to hear from in terms of the voice actor maybe I can talk to next Please do go check out Carolina's YouTube channel, Twitter and more. The links are all in the description and pinned comment below. She's got a great web series that we were talking about. Also some cool videos with Anjali Bimani, Symmetra's voice actor and a whole lot more. This longer content is only possible with the support of my patrons on Patreon. So if you'd like to learn more about you can support this kind of content from just a dollar pound or euro a month and get some sweet perks at the same time, do click my Patreon link here too. Thank you so much for tuning in. I've been Hammy. Take it easy.